Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have our surprises from Dingle Ireland because my Ireland box has arrived. This is sent to me for review by Catherine and the team over there and I'm always so happy to receive it and share the contents with all of you. But be forewarned, if you do decide to become a subscriber, you don't want to spoil the contents for everyone over in their very active Facebook group because they will jump on you because people love the surprise element of this box and I do too but usually I open it late enough in the uh, month that most people have already received their box or they know better than to watch the unboxing unless they're really really curious so that said this lovely box is $49.95 per month there is some savings if you're able to do a multi-month subscription up front the shipping all the way from Ireland is just $15.50 to the US and I think they ship worldwide so if you want your dough of Irish culture and goodies and beautiful items this is the box for you I do have a code for you it is simply Maui my Emerald Isle from my heritage well not my actual heritage but where I was brought up and that will save you five dollars but I'll put all of that important information for you in the description box below of course let's go ahead and dive into our box that has the lovely bright green tissue paper and of course all the goodies inside so it's the best of Ireland. Uh, if you love Ireland or you have Irish heritage or you've just visited Ireland, you probably wanted to take some of it home with you. Um, this way you get a little dose of it every single month. I do think it's a really cozy box. We get a lot of edible treats, which I absolutely love, both savory and sweet. There's always a recipe which is included, which is very fun. I generally like the items that are representing Ireland, but without uh, sort of a souvenir kind of feel to them so sometimes when there's like a shamrock and like Ireland is written on it that's not like something that I will probably use as much as the beautiful items that we often get as well so but I know a lot of people really love to like show off their uh, Irish heritage so they're they're very happy when there's like the flags or the shamrocks or the Ireland embroidered on there so I just took everything out, the whole bundle, so that I could get down to the booklet, which is also something that is in every box, as well as the recipe card, because they are usually sort of the base of that bundle. So the theme for May is Isle of Home. It's like I have an Isle of Home too, like I was saying, it is Maui for me. But I think that a lot of people sort of feel that connection to Ireland when they go or even before they go. And it's one of those places that people sometimes have on their bucket list. So we have this gorgeous sort of image. It looks like a painting probably. So I'll read a little bit more about it. So let's see. Wow, this is a really thick booklet. So Catherine takes so much time. She tells us all about what's going on in Dingle. She does her own photography. She tells us about the makers that are represented in the box. Often there's some interesting facts about history. For example, I'm seeing some songs I think in here about, uh, so maybe some of the, uh, immigration history because I'm seeing uh, images from Ellis Island which I know a lot of you have family who went through there. I was very interesting to go through there uh, a few years ago probably like 20-25 years ago I went with my folks because um, I am adopted but my parents have family lines where people went through Ellis Island so that was very very interesting. Okay, let's see what it says. Oh my gosh, there's like beautiful images of some sheep. I always love the sheep. And a, and a picture of Catherine herself. So let's see. Oh, she started with um, a song. But let's see. It says, oh. Before I delve further into our May theme, I first wish to introduce myself to our new members. There's so many new subscribers to My Ireland Box this month. So Falta, uh, to all who have joined the My Ireland Box community. I think Fal Falta is... Um, Welcome, I believe. It says, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, so forgive me. It says, many of you are very familiar with me as you may have been a subscriber for months, even several years. For our new members, my name is Catherine and I live in the beautiful countryside at Dingle, County Kerry, Ireland. When I was in college in Galway and working in Dublin, training to become a lawyer, I used to tell everyone about the beauty of the countryside in Dingle and I love to chat about our wonderful Irish language that we have in Ireland, our culture and traditions. I was always so interested in the history of Ireland and I was so proud of it. When I went home to Dingle, I would have, I would have, I would have met tourists who were walking around 
eager to speak with the locals. I felt their love for Ireland and I became very interested in why they were so passionate about it whilst living thousands of miles away. Of course, it was evident that their ancestors left many years ago or perhaps they had just an unexplained love for Ireland. I wanted to know more about their connections. I realized also that when visitors left Ireland, they were lonely for it. I decided that I wanted to bring Ireland into the homes of those that loved it and missed it and had a huge connection with our Emerald Isle. So I began Ireland's first ever monthly delivery of Irish made surprises back in March of 2012. Wow. So over 10 years, she's been doing this. I remember wrapping up a box and tying it with a great big green ribbon. Wow, that's awesome. I'm glad that I happened to read over that. But as you can see, there's just so much to read every time. So let me see. It looks like she is going to tell us a little bit about why she made the selections. There's actually a whole section instead of, yeah, why I chose the surprises within this My Ireland box for you and let's meet the maker. So it's organized a little bit differently. Usually there's like little subheaders where it tells me like the actual makers. So this is a little bit more in narrative form. So we'll see if I manage this in my unboxing. We might we might do a little bit of jumping around in the booklet so that I can give you the context for the choices that she made for this one, but I think we'll be able to do it okay. So yes, I've titled this May Ireland uh, my Ireland box, the Isle of Home, and the surprises that I chose for this My Ireland box were inspired by those who left Ireland and by some little treasures that they may have taken with them. All the while, I wish to marry these choices with what you would use and like to receive. So she is thinking about things that will be useful for us. There's sometimes there's a sneak peek too in the back for what is coming next. So let me see if there's anything back there so that we don't run out of time. Ooh, so she did mention that she went to uh, university in Galway. It says, fancy basking in summer city life in Ireland's gorgeous Galway. Galway is gorgeous. Uh, place of true culture, tradition, and heritage. Stories, love, friendship, and laughter, fun, and music. We've curated that experience for you. I went to university in Galway, and so I spent four years living there. We love to revisit it, and it feels like a larger dingle. A quick drive out of the city, and you're in the countryside where Irish is spoken, and the scenery is spectacular. I have one really gorgeous piece that is being handmade for you along with lots of other Irish treasures that remind me of Galway that are made in this beautiful country and so we we're really excited to send the spirit of Galway during this time of year to you the Clada, the famous Galway pubs the island the Gaelic and the culture the food and the traditions it is a city of wonder to those that love Ireland and I cannot wait to take you there on lots of adventures I am so excited. Galway is one of my husband's and my favorite places when we visited Ireland a few years ago. I had one of the best dinners ever at a restaurant. I think that was called Kai. It was so good, but we loved walking around there. We had lovely weather, but let's, uh, speaking of food, let's see what our recipe is this time around. Oh, whatever that is, it looks delicious. <laughs> Doesn't that look delicious? Oh, it is Kathleen McGee's Irish Potato Farls. So it says, my mother Kathy and my Aunt Anne Marie have been making these for us since we were kids. They're utterly delicious. Whilst I love mine topped with some juicy tomatoes and a sprinkle of wild garlic salt, my brother Owen likes them with malted butter and marmalade. Kathy and Anne Marie, however, savor them in the same way we did it as Ireland as children in Coalesland County Tyrone with a little butter that melts when it's spread over the warm potato farl. Each bite brings them back to their childhoods. So it's basically like a potato, like a latke. Um, they look really good though, with that little bit of crispness on the outside. Mm, that sounds delicious. So let's get into the items. I don't think she said much about it in this section, but we will find everything. Okay, you guys, I'm just gonna pull everything out so that I can show you the items as they appear in her in her booklet. And then I'm just gonna move this tissue paper off to the side so that it's out of my way. She says, I wish to send you a few of the treasures from Ireland that the emigrant would have taken with them if they were so lucky. And also these surprises needed to be usable by you, liked by you and treasured. So yes, she's thinking about modern usage, which I appreciate. I wanted a star surprise. And so the tweed wallet from Mukros was chosen. That's what we have here. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. I've gotten to know John Cahill well over the, well over the last few years and I was delighted to know that we could work together uh, that he would work with us using Mokros's famous tweed to make this beautiful wallet for you. 
what a wonderful and unique business this is. They may have one of the most idyllic locations to perform their business in the world. I always spot wild deer amongst the ancient trees when I visit the weavers, the most beautiful trees and scenery. How wonderful it must be for John and his team to drive to work every day through the park. John spoke about how the magnificent scenery and nature of Killarney National Park with its distinctive combinations of mountains, lakes, woods, and waterfalls under ever-changing skies provide inspiration to him, a master weaver who designs every item that is made. Then of course seeing the 200 year old looms at work was so wonderful. It can only be true that some Mucros Irish tweed made it made it was over the Atlantic with some of those who emigrated. So it looks like we have a little like wristlet strap which you guys you know I love that. So you could put it right onto the zipper I'm guessing on the zipper pull. So this is a nice two-sided wallet. You can see, look at all of those compartments for pockets, uh, pockets for cards. And then of course you have this zipper in the center for your change or little items. I have to kind of get that zipper pull to pull out. Yes, so we have something for your change, which I find that a lot of wallets these days don't have change purses. But look at how much space there is in there so that you can really see everything. And then we have the big pocket, of course, for your bills. So one on each side, you could probably actually put a checkbook in there if you still have <laughs> checkbooks. But yes, I'm guessing this bus go onto the zipper pull, a nice little strap. So you could just use it as your mini wallet. I think you could probably, let's see, my phone actually fits inside. So if you wanted to use it as your purse with just a bunch of your cards, you definitely could. And I love that it's got this sort of classic dark mossy green but then these fun like touches of this fuchsia that's a really fun print for the plaid okay says then we have another item i'm really excited that my phone fits in it oh this is beautiful look at this handkerchief that's a little old school but definitely has that um emma gray vibe right so it says this beautiful handkerchief uh then was made by samuel lamont and as i say above i was delighted to see old handkerchiefs reside in a beautiful case at cobb heritage museum embroidery let me hold it up for you and indeed crochet are an old irish skill and it was meant to be tre uh, meant to be treasure for you within this my ireland box samuel lamont and sons limited is a family business which has been manufacturing and supplying irish housewares for almost 200 years we've definitely gotten some of their items before Perhaps then a Samuel Lamont embroidered handkerchief left Ireland with a passenger many years ago. Founded in 1830 by the man whose name it bears, Samuel Lamont and Sons Limited became one of Northern Ireland's uh, foremost linen weavers, diversifying during the 1950s into textile printing and terry towel manufacturing samuel lamont suit had an enviable range of top quality household textile items it gained the royal warrant both for retailing and for the supply of bed linen the company was a founding member of the irish linen guild and it is still a member today thank you to joe lamont and team for making this lovely piece for us so I hope you guys can see they did a really nice job of folding it you can see the the detail can you see the like lines so that it's not just a plain piece of cloth the actual weave you can see there's these like nice little like grid lines can i see if i can make that show up but the embroidery is lovely as well so this is kind of a like classic piece i don't know what i would do with a handkerchief but it does seem like a nice little thing to have and put it in your trunk of treasures especially if you're someone who well these days i will tell you like my <laughs> my eyes run like my nose runs more so maybe i'm gonna have to start being one of those gals that has a nice neat little handkerchief in my purse all the time all right so it says then we have the biscuits you know i love to hear about a biscuit aka a cookie uh, <laughs> we call them cookies this is from kilbegan kilbegan i don't know uh irish oat cookies oh my gosh you guys we have gotten cookies from this company before and they are so delicious and we got this whole box of them it says uh then we have the biscuits inspired by peggy on her trip to american Amer to America within the book that I sent you. Oh, little spoiler. Uh, these oat biscuits were a must. I love a good family business and the Lawler family make great food. The fact that their oats are organic really floats my boat. In 1999, Pat Laylor decided to convert the entire farm to organic status. This means that the oat crop is grown in soil that is enriched and sustained by good farming practice and they do not use pesticides, herbicides, or artificial fertilizers when growing their oats. You'll eat your delicious oat cookies as nature intended. You guys, there are so so, these are so good I love a good oat cookie um, and so it tells us like unsalted 
Irish butter is in here. They tell you all about the stuff. That is so exciting. What does it say? Our cookies are proudly created by the Lailer family, Lawler family, and are individually handmade with great care for superior texture and taste. Mm, I'm so excited. But I don't get to open them because I usually take photos of this of this box, so I don't get to open it yet. It says, the farm has passed down through six generations of the Lawler Lawler. Layler family beginning in 1844 another reason why I chose this family business for this month it goes back to famine times connecting us with the oats and the land once again the first records of the Layler family farming in Ballard date back to 1844 since then generations of Laylers have farmed the land and the current team's mission is to preserve the land by farming in a responsible manner leaving the soil in as good a condition as they inherited it Pat and the Layler family and team say our oat cookies are handmade with the finest ingredients, including Irish butter and our organic oats. All right. And we have a book. Catherine does love her books. I would say we get a book maybe three to four times a year. Uh, so this one looks like it might be, well, first of all, it's part of a trilogy and it looks like it might be historical fiction. And then we've got or maybe it's like a diary. We do have some like images, like looks like um, woodblock prints or something. Okay, so it's not too big. It says the story of Irish immigrants of the 19th century lovingly told through the life of 13 year old Peggy who takes the treacher treacherous sea journey all on her own to start a new life as a maid in the grand house in a grand house in America. A story of courage, independence and adventure. So this looks like something that a lot of folks of all ages could enjoy says, I just love the trilogy of books, Children of the Famine, and I've read the first and second books twice. I will begin the third tonight with Kate, uh, my 11-year-old. It says, perhaps I will be inspired to create a new theme for a future My Ireland box after reading it. I enjoy how my life in Ireland inspires each theme. This book, Wildflower Girl, is about Peggy, who had to leave her beloved sister, brother, and grand aunt to go to America shortly after the famine ended. It is such a wonderful book. This is the second in the trilogy, the first being Under the Hawthorn Tree, that I've recommended numerous times. They do not need to be read in order, and hence, as the theme this month was about those who emigrated, I felt it was the more fitting of the three to send to you. So that is good to know that they don't have to be read in order to be enjoyed. Enjoy it as much as myself and my two daughters do. Of course, there would have been tea galore on the ships and also within the suitcases of the immigrants. So we have our classic berries tea. It says to sip away on your hot brew from County Cork, the county that Cobb is nestled within and where Annie Moore was from. The connections that weave through this curation are wonderful to write about. So that must be like a callback to something else she wrote about in the booklet. Berry's tea was founded in 1901 by James J. Berry, grandfather of current chairman Peter Berry. Berry certainly is a institution not only in Cork, but nationwide in fact, worldwide, really. They say that they spent years perfecting their blends that have been passed on through generations of the Berry family. Berries proudly say to all that since the beginning, our master blender has never compromised in his absolute commitment to fine quality tea. Master blender Dennis Daly has been blending our teas for nearly 40 years and tastes our blends three times a day to ensure that every moment you spend with our tea is as rewarding as the last. He must be a tea lover. It says, of course, Berry's tea is now a reminder of home with every sip that the Irish abroad take love that all right you guys so let's just go over everything that we got in this delightful box and i love that this is really um a box that i think will resonate for a lot of you that do have irish heritage like i don't know how many generations back uh where someone in your family probably emigrated from ireland uh for whatever reason but let's see she did say um let's see I felt that the Mukros tweed wallet was so useful and indeed represented travel. The handkerchief was certainly something that would have been embroidered in Ireland by a relative, an old Irish craft and handed to the immigrant as a keepsake. Yes, to be like to remember us by. Um, I thought of the handkerchief that I have had that I have that belonged to my dad. There's something traditional about them. They're an heirloom to treasure. I had this one made for you by Sam Lamont's team who embroidered the shamrock for you. The oat biscuits were another must. Oat cakes and biscuits were given to those who left by family. And the tea was a necessity as I hadn't sent it in a while and sure we all need a tea top up. Of course our ancestors drank tea too and I've read that it was aboard the ships that sailed across the Atlantic all those years ago. And then of course she says I love books and I make no secret of it. This book is part of a trilogy but they do not need to be read in order. Um, so let's see she talks she says a little bit more about how she's already read the other two twice. So 
fun. So this actually looks like a fun read. All right, you guys, and don't forget, we also got the recipe. I'm most excited that the wallet fits my phone and then it has the little wristlet. That to me makes it very useful. Um, and I love that because I know it's from Ireland and it's from a you know great Irish brand, but it doesn't like feel like a souvenir. It really feels like something um, authentic and like useful and a nice, well-made product instead of something that you would get in a shop because you wanted a souvenir that had you know shamrock on it. And even this uh, handkerchief that does have a shamrock on it, it does feel like a little old world, which is kind of cool too. But this this looks delicious, and it's literally got um, three four ingredients, so I think I might be able to manage it. We've got potatoes, salt, butter, and flour. So even I should be able to make these little potato pancakes, which sound great. I hope you all enjoyed this unboxing. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have any connections to Ireland and what your favorite item in this box was. For me, it's probably the biscuits because they're going to go so well with that tea. I'll see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.